I'm looking at the Numa system at the, at the building. Um, <coughs> this, uh, I'm, I'm jumping into this building. This building was simply created by adding uh, a building here from the right uh, with this specific shape, and, and it has five stories. Uh, so there's nothing. There's nothing to this, uh, but. But already when we created the, the building, um, it generated uh, some some uh, core spaces. I'm going to just keep them in there so you can see them afterwards, how we, we get them into Revit. Uh, if I, they, they are connected across the, uh, the different floors because they're elevators, they're core, core spaces. So you can connect spaces through the, out the floors or we can add additional spaces. We can say, okay, we just have three additional spaces that we're going to add here. Uh, <clears throat> so these, these these are the ones that are not connected. Uh, if you go to another floor, uh, you see only the first, only the core spaces. And we can always move those core spaces and they move across all floors because they're connected. Uh, now I can use this uh, and, and export this file uh, <clears throat> to uh, BIM XML for Revit here. I can specify I want to include the components uh, into the export. Uh, hit uh, export. Uh, this building is now getting exported uh, <coughs> to my desktop. Uh, in Revit, um, if I have a new uh, a new file here, I can start with a new file and I can use the importer uh, to connect to to import, this is the one I just imported uh, that I just exported. Uh, so I'm imp importing this, including the furniture. <coughs> you can see here. I'm going to go to the floor that was actually there's uh, the level one and level two and site were the default uh, levels because we named them floor one and through five. Uh, they created new levels in in Revit. Uh, so we have these uh, <clears throat> these spaces in here. Uh, you see that th these these pieces of equipment that uh, we've added here, they are coming from a library that is installed uh, because these are uh, uh, the standard library elements in the NUMA. They are part of the, the uh, installation uh, in in with, with the plugin installation. Um, we can now modify this. Of course, we can uh, start creating walls. We could. Uh, this this is on one floor. We could start adding uh, walls in here and then uh, build around this. So this was only created with room separator lines. Uh, you would have to start building the walls. But you can do this, and then you can re remove filter filter the, the uh, plan by by uh, wall separation lines, and you can remove those wall separation lines, and the spaces fill up, pop up to the to the size of the uh, uh, <laughs> the space that you created around them. Obviously, there's a lot more to it here that you can start when you start to to, to build the model around whatever you got out of the uh, Numa system. I'm not going to get too much into that uh, now. Because I want to show you a little bit more about the connections. If I uh, now start making changes to this plan, for example, uh, I make a, the spaces larger, or I remove uh, some components here, or I add <coughs> some in another place. Uh, you can afterwards export this again as a BIM XML file and import it into the same update the model in Anuma. Uh, what what we are doing right now is currently is that we say that the data is mostly residing in uh, Onuma and the geometries are uh, are uh, the Revit ones are, are the ones that are, are uh, have priority. So we prioritize according that to that. In other words, you can although you can export very large amounts of, of attributes uh, from from Revit to Onuma. Uh, we do not recommend actually to to, to maintain and store uh, a lot of, of uh, information inside the Revit model. Um, 
that's for various reasons. Later on, when you go down into the maintenance cycle and all that, uh, your your maintenance people are not going to be able to open actually air the revit file and make changes or corrections every time there is a change. If a pump gets exchanged, that 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 is not going to flow back into the revit model. So we believe very strongly that data is better, and and I know that even Revit uh, Autodesk themselves believe that that even though you can store a lot in here. Uh, because it's so free form, you can basically create for every every family. You can create as many attributes as you want to, totally free form. It gets extremely difficult to actually maintain that data in Revit. Uh, there's no structure to it and all that. When we when we export this now to uh, uh, to BIM XML and import it into Anuma, we can specify <coughs> um, if you want to up update attributes as well or just geometry in Anuma. And uh, it will update the geometries in 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 the uh, in, in in Anuma when you do that. Uh, this is a, a floor plan of uh, uh, with, with uh, VA equipment in it. This is in in Anuma. These are just placeholders because we don't have them in Anuma. But this was created by importing uh, SEPs standards from VA, uh, and uh, we imported the, the spaces that they have as a standard Revit spaces. Uh, <coughs> So we generated this floor plan f at first, and now when we export this and we import that into Revit SEPS library loaded in, in, in the plugin, it actually uses those elements, those components, uh, those uh, families to generate the model. So this is a direct import from this other model here to show you. I, what, what you can see here is there are two things. One is I started out to make some changes. So this is not quite the same model anymore. If you look at uh, this here, uh, there no, there's no table and, and chairs in there. So I, I, I'm using this here as saying, okay, this is the requirement for, for a hospital that I'm, I'm designing. This is the SEPS requirement coming directly out of SEPS. Uh, and now in the Revit, I'm starting to, to make modifications. I change room sizes, I, I add furniture, uh, I, I remove equipment. Uh, and later down the road, you can say, okay, I would like now compare this model that I have on my desktop with uh, the with the SEPS requirements in Onuma. Uh, we can do this through the uh, uh, plugin through our plugin in Revit. Uh, by looking at the uh, uh, first, you log in because this is now uh, going through web services. Let me see this. This building here is uh, the building ID. I need to, uh, the building ID is uh, B twenty two eight fifteen. So that's what I, that's information I need on the on the Revit side to connect to that. Uh, so that's twenty two. 8.15, and I'm going to use the IFC GUID uh, to connect to those spaces and, and equipment to see. So because when I export this file from Anuma, it had already IFC GUIDs that were generated in Anuma, and they are transferred over to the model in, uh, in Revit. And now I'm comparing. I'm using that IFC GUID as the unique identifier of the, of the equipment. You can also use the ins if you have unique naming conventions for the mark and the room numbers. You can also use those uh, to to do the, the comparison instead of the IFC GUID. There's certain advantages for each one. Uh, I'm going to look at the uh, uh, spaces now, and I'm going to compare that. And I can see here a list of all the spaces and the way they changed. So I, I see here there's a, a difference of uh, 16 for, for, for these spaces. There's an uh, additional 16.9%. Uh, you can see the file, the, the, the model area and the NUMA area. So the, in, in the requirements, it was 120. It was enlarged to do this. Some of them are reduced. Here you can see one that is reduced. So the red ones are the, the, the ones that are getting reduced in size. Uh, here is one that is completely <laughs> these, uh, these, this one did not even exist. Let me see. That's uh, oh, that was deleted in. That's why it's red. Uh, it was deleted in this in this model, uh, but it, it, it's actually in in Anuma. So uh, I can also uh, with that add in this here. 
So this could be the department. In the beginning, we had department color coding. So this is uh, what came in from, from the departments of these. Uh, but I can also change this now and say I want to actually show the room comparison. Uh, so now I'm, I'm seeing uh, the same plane with the same color coding uh, showing me uh, the, the spaces that were added or removed or w what the difference is in uh, uh, space areas. So the gray ones are the ones that were unchanged. In, in Onuma you can just share, uh, you can share your uh, project with as many people as you would like to uh, that uh, have access uh, editing access in in, uh, in Onuma, they can start making changes in Onuma, uh, but only one at a time. A, a, a scheme like this one, uh, while I'm working in it in, in Onuma, it gets locked. And if you try to get to the same uh, project, I, you're going to get a message that someone else is uh, that actually my name is showing up that I'm working on it. Uh, I then have to go to the project list uh, to release it, or if I don't work on it for, I think it's uh, one hour, uh, it release it gets released by itself. So uh, if you just leave your computer going and walk away and you don't do anything for an hour, it gets lo uh, locked and then someone else can start unlocking it. But on the Revit side, but, you're just reading, so it could be multiple users. You're, you're seeing, right. seeing the Onuma data in Revit in this case, but yeah. you're not editing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This, for example, this comparison, of course, it was only a web service connection. So uh, the same thing is true if you want to look at data for individual objects. If I go now to this computer, uh, and I select that in Revit, I can say I want to uh, see the properties. Uh, this is now data that is coming from Anuma. There's not much information. I didn't add that much in Anuma, but this is now actually in Anuma. I can then even save. So I can make a change. I can. Uh, Modify the SKU or whatever I want to, and save it back to the Numa server. So this is a, a, a web service connection, and in this in this case you can actually. Oh no, that's not true. Actually, when you try to save something like here, and and someone else is working on the model in the Numa, it's going to give you a message that it it is locked at the moment. So you have to wait. Uh, so you can never work at the same time on a model. Uh, but you can share it with as many people as you would like to. Now we can we can do the same thing with the components uh, that the comparison that we just did. It's collecting all the information about the components. Here you can see this is the difference is zero here in the right hand column. For most of these pieces of equipment, if I go all the way down to the bottom, I can see here we have some that were removed in the model and some that were uh, added. Uh, I can now apply those filters. Let me quickly get rid of this. Um, so we see only the color coding here. So this is now in plane or in 3D. You can see the piece of equipment that were added or the ones that did not make it uh, from, from that were removed in the Revit model. They're uh, not the same as in the, in the requirement model in the original one. Uh, so you can you can make those comparisons, and you can always go and start looking at the data inside Anuma from here. You can do the same thing in in Navisworks. If you save this uh, file uh, or open it in Navisworks now with 2014, you can simply open the Revit model directly in Navisworks, and you can do the same thing in Navisworks. You have a plug in there as well where you can start to, uh, clicking on elements and and seeing the data in Anuma. So that's that's really coming from this. Uh, a philosophy that we try to keep all as much data as possible in the Numa model, and we don't want to even start adding that that information in Revit. Although it is possible when you export something from Numa and import it into into Revit, the, the data is coming along, uh, but it's not going to update later. I mean, it, it's not going to be the, the complete set, uh, and we we are not attempting to try to, to make Revit the storage for the data. This actually comes from a lot of the work that we're doing with GSA and VA and DOD as well, too, where they want to um, track the data as it goes through the project. So, for example, if they're uh, saying, well, here are, the, here are the names of the spaces and the t types of equipment we need inside spaces that's coming from their program requirements, uh, we don't want to start retyping it in Revit. We want to, first of all, get it connected in. So all of a sudden you have, you need this uh, laboratory room a in, in requirements, and here it is in Revit. The same thing with the equipment. And then as you start going through the project, all the other attributes related to a piece of equipment, for example, you, yes, you can put an SKU number in Revit inside the attributes of an object, but 
ultimately as it heads down towards operations and maintenance. They want to pull it out into other systems. Therefore, you want to be able to keep that data fluid. And in many ways, having the Revit model along with the Onuma system data allows more levels of users to be interacting with the data. You don't have to, everybody doesn't have to be a Revit expert, in other words.